envelope of gases which surrounds the earth and is called air has for centuries meant more to man than just elements essential for breathing. Throughout the ages, mankind's dream has been to soar through the skies like birds, over and beyond physical barriers, to rise far above the earth. His visions of flight carried him beyond the serenity of drifting clouds into uncharted regions yet unknown to earthbound man. Man acquired his wings through years of experimentation, coupled with raw courage and inspired vision. His early attempts at achieving flight were usually awkward, sometimes comic, and at times, even tragic. These early experiments in flight, highlighted by the success of Wilbur and Orville Wright, caught the attention of a youthful and enterprising individual whose dedication and ingenuity were to carve for him a niche in the annals of aviation history. This film documents the achievements of Harold F. Pitcairn and his contributions to aviation, accomplishments that resulted in listing the name of Pitcairn among the great pioneers of aviation. Harold Pitcairn's pioneering work in aviation led to the development of the highly respected Pitcairn mail wing airplane and the creation of the East Coast's major airmail line. In time, this fledgling air service, known as Pitcairn Aviation, would result in the establishment of Eastern Airlines, one of the world's largest airline companies whose complex and sophisticated aircraft would give aviation's pioneers feelings of great pride. Pitcairn's concern for the safety of pilots and their flying machines was a driving force in his pioneering of the rotary-winged aircraft in America. The achievement of direct control autogyros was the turning point in the development of the helicopter. As a teenager, Harold was excited by the newborn age of powered flight. He designed and built model airplanes. His first was a delta-winged craft that anticipated the design of modern aircraft. In June of 1916, Harold enrolled in the Curtis Flying School in Newport News, Virginia, where he met Agnew Larson, whose talents in mechanical engineering were to play an important role in Harold's future. Pitcairn later enlisted in the Signal Corps during World War I for military flight training. The Curtis Jenny airplane was the plane used for flight instruction. During this training period, the armistice was declared, ending Cadet Pitcairn's military service. 
Harold returned to his home in Bryn Athen, Pennsylvania, and married his fiancée, Clara Davis. Although he assumed a position in the family business, he kept abreast of the developments in aviation. Pitcairn often combined the two activities when he attended business meetings by renting a Curtis plane, which was flown by Jim Ray, one of Curtis's top pilots. Harold continued his flight training by acquiring a Farman Sport biplane, which he hangered on the family estate. The excitement of this era of barnstorming and stunt flying and the abundance of surplus World War I airplanes contributed to Pitcairn's determination to focus his attention on the growing aviation industry while continuing his relationship with the family business. Encouraged by Jim Ray and former classmate Agnew Larson, Pitcairn set up an air service on a former cow pasture on the family estate in Bryn Athen, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Philadelphia. The facility included a large hangar, which also served as a flight school. The Aero Club of Pennsylvania clubhouse was added later. The formal dedication of Pitcairn Field drew a crowd of over 20,000 spectators who witnessed performances of civilian and military aircraft. The more daring spectators wanted to experience the thrill of flying and were willing to pay for sightseeing rides. By 1924, the key to a profitable air service was an increase in the passenger carrying capacity of an aircraft. The task of designing such an airplane was assigned to Agnew Larson, who had become Pitcairn's chief engineer. Within a few months, the first Pitcairn plane, the PA-1 Fleet Wing, was designed and built. It could carry four passengers and a pilot. The primary purpose of the PA-1 was for short sightseeing trips, earning it the title of the Hop Ship. The increasing business of sightseeing rides and flight training plus the questionable reliability of old World War I airplanes, prompted Pitcairn to produce a more efficient airplane, which would help him establish an image of integrity in aircraft design. To help gain recognition, Pitcairn decided to enter one of his planes in the 1926 National Air Races as part of the sesquicentennial celebration in Philadelphia. Displaying a unique ingenuity in aircraft design, the Pitcairn organization, working against time and in secrecy, designed and built the Sesqui Wing airplane. This plane could be fitted with two different classes of engines, making it possible to have it entered in two different events. The engine change was achieved with masterful simplicity by using a specially designed portable rig supporting two overhead hoists. After winning the efficiency race with the PA-2 powered by the 90 horsepower Curtis OX-5 engine, pilot Jim Ray taxied the plane to the waiting mechanics and the engine change rig. The well-rehearsed crew made the engine change to the more powerful 160-horsepower Curtis C6 engine in less than 30 minutes. <laughs> 